Hi, you guys. Oh my God, I'm trying to push this away. All right, look at that door. She's gonna come flying in here, y'all, the cat. How is everybody? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, how is everybody? I just made it in. I have like an hour between people. How is everybody? Okay, I'll wait for you guys to show up on the chat. There you are. Hi, I'm at 8.25 here time. It's, uh, I guess it has to be 5.20. 525. <laughs> it's five, I don't know. Three hours behind. How are you guys? Oh my God. What a day. What is happening? What is happening? It was, I've never had so much fuckery in one. Well, I have had a lot of fuckery in pretty much every day. I'm looking to see when Mercury is going retrograde. I think we're, we're in the shadow period because everything was cuckoo bird. Hi. She wants to come up here and see you guys. Look, look y'all. There she is. <laughs> She's on camera. Hi, baby. I know mommy misses you. There she is. Okay, bye-bye. Um, hi, you guys. I know she gets so mad when I go on camera. Let's see if Mercury Retrograde's happening. Oh, my God, y'all. Y'all, how are you guys? Oh, I'm going to tell you. Okay, Mercury retrograde. Let's see when it comes. Because I think we're, from today, I think we're in the shadow period. So December 13th. So we are just two weeks, just about two weeks. Oh my God, the fuckery. The absolute fuckery, okay? The fuckery all day. I was like, wow, all right. Um, oh, it's almost a full moon. That's the crazy conversation going on. I'm like... What? I can read people's energy when I'm out there and I'm like, yeah, I don't think so. So yes, look y'all shave. I shaved. Can you see? It's shaved. You know why? Because I don't care. Um, I'm sick of trying to grow it. It's, it's pre-shadow. I can tell. I was like, what is going on? <laughs> people. Um, oh my God. Okay. Right on time for the holidays. I have to slow this chat down. I've been saying that for years and you know me. I forgot gobble gobble. <laughs> I have a really funny story. I mean, I don't know if y'all are find it funny, but so our first dog that was sent here, my mom was a, I realize no one cares, but this is really cute. You just reminded me when you said gobble gobble. So my mom sent me one of her show dogs when I first moved in with John. John is my husband, for those who don't know. Anyway, when I first moved in with him, and so she sent this little tiny poodle. She raised standard poodles. So Tucker came and he was our first dog. Anyway, he flew from Canada to LAX on a cargo plane with like 500 turkeys for Thanksgiving. And any time, any time we said <laughs> gobble gobble around him, he would like shy away like this. He was the only doggy on a plane and he was only like eight weeks old, maybe even less, on a plane with all these turkeys coming to California. Yeah, he was never the same. That's true. <laughs> That's really true, y'all. He was never the same. So we used to jokingly go gobble, gobble. <laughs> he would like me like this. That's what he, and it's like a, what, six hour flight? I mean, from Toronto to, and then they got to go through all of the stuff. But I think my mom actually drove him down to Michigan, somewhere down there in New York, wherever, and uh, put him on a plane there. So he just went down slow and I brought two of your forecasts on your website, but haven't. Okay, you all, if you're buying the forecasts on the website, oh my God, this is so annoying. You get an email that says you got it and you click the link in the email. If you still haven't received it, message me back and I will put your name to the list and I'll have my web guy go and check why it's not sending it out, but it should be sending it out. So when you pay for it, you should get an email right back that says, click here and add your information. That's what should happen. And also, also y'all, uh, pulled Kim Porter's if you page off the net when he, oh, he pulled Kim Porter's. How does he have the right to do that? Fuck that guy. I'm telling him, fuck that guy. You know what? Here's the problem. Oh my God, don't get me started. Anyway, hold on, let me finish. So um, yeah, the poor baby was traumatized. And somebody asked me to tell when we got the home invasion robbery story, which remind me to tell. Y'all know it who've heard it. It's kind of sick. <laughs> it's kind of funny though. Um, anyway, um, so 
for the personal readings on my website, number one, I only book through my website. So if anybody online is saying it's me, it's not. I don't have that. I, I can't, okay? Do you have Aries in your chart? No, actually I don't. It's my ninth house and I don't have a single thing. But here, let me explain something. You'd think I would have Aries in my chart because I'm an aggressive bitch. But... What it is, is some of my Leo planets are in the decan of, decadent of Aries. So by degree, they have an Aries undertone, but mostly Sag, because I'm on the run. I'm on the run, y'all. I'm fucking running. <laughs> and I'm a Leo. But anyway, um, I'm trending on Facebook now. I'm all over the place. It was super fun, y'all. But you guys... I, I had to open my calendar till February to accommodate, but I will not open it past that. I do not want to book up for a whole year. You will have an Aries stellium in the 12th. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a good thing you're an Aries because otherwise you just roll over and go help me. Um, I'll open again later on, but I cannot read 24-7. So I cannot. I just cannot. So if there are people who, people keep emailing me, they're like, can you just fit me in? I'm like, no, no, I can't. Because that's now taken away from my, <laughs> my life. And I'm already, no. And if you ordered the astrology charts, the natal charts, yours are starting to come in this week. I have like a six to eight week wait between when you order because I do them in between my readings. So they take, you know, it's another 40 hour work week to do those on top of the 40. So I'm work till midnight, basically. Um, yes, it's normal not to have everything. My training, my training, are, are you talking about when am I doing my classes? We're just setting that up this week. I have to finish writing five more chapters of my book, but I got slammed with this. So remember when I do readings, I can't do the other stuff because I'm tired. But, um, and I even didn't exercise for three days. You know what happens when that happens. Um, so yeah, Mew's adorable, huh? She's so big and she's like, why are these people talking to my mom? We care, we care, no one cares. <coughs> I had, I'm stuffed again. I just don't know what to say. Anyway, let's see. Uh, yeah, if you had, if you leave me messages, I don't answer them. I'm really sorry I can't answer everybody's messages. So it's just, if you get on the calendar and you book a reading, I do, but I can't answer questions. I'm one person. I'm literally one person, so I can't answer questions. And I don't. I, I just don't have time. I mean, I'm sorry. No, Mew is not pregnant. Stop. Mew was fixed. She's not pregnant. We're not pregnant. We're just curvy. Are you calling Mew fat? <laughs> Are you calling the cat fat? Um, <laughs> no. Oh, God, that's awful. This is old coffee. I thought it was my water. Um... Yes, I'm viral. You can, if there's any openings on my website under services, it should say, or under astrology, it should say natal chart. If it doesn't say natal chart, then I'm out because I cannot, I have a life, y'all. Uh -huh. I have a life. So I get agitated when I don't get to do my 30 miles a weekend hiking, right? So, yeah, we're about in Sagittarius. That's right, little Sages. Um, okay, so I promised somebody I would tell them the home invasion robbery story. So, here's how it goes down. Y'all know this. If I'm repeating myself, for the people who know this, you know this. In 2010, we would go to, every Christmas, we would go to Canada, right? This is like 15 different colors to get this color to match this Anyway, we would go to Canada. So we would go to our cousins in Trail, British Columbia. And we would go to Red Mountain. Shout out to Red Mountain. And we would go there and we would ski. So all of us Californian Bellas would go to the Canadian Bellas and then hang out and seven kids and all of that, right? And we would ski. So we left our neighbors. Shout out to Ann and John to watch Tulip, our kitty at the time. Not Tallulah, Tulip. She died right after Keith, four months after Keith. Anyway, um, so on the way there, now this is weird, six months before we left in December, which we usually left around the 21st of December uh, and would stay for a couple days, like a week and whatever. And we'd fly into Spokane and we would drive the four hours and we'd stop at Costco, fill the minivan up with all kinds of food 
because there were seven kids going to be eating all week. And then we'd stay at the cousins and we'd bombard them like, hey, here we are. And drive through the snow along the Columbia River, that, all of that, right? So, and then get hit the mountain and the kids would ski. So in the August before that, our neighbor, and she knows who she is, our fucking neighbor, she came to our door. Now keep in mind, we've been living there like 20 years. She never came to the door. I used to babysit her grandson when he was little. He was my kid's age. So she never spoke to us. Like she said, hey, but other than that, and she came to the door and she was insistent on giving us hockey, ticket, hockey tickets in the middle of the summer. I turned to John and I said, that bitch is going to rob our house. Exactly what I said in August. Anyway, I couldn't find my kids to ask them if they wanted to go to the hockey game, right? So is this frozen? No, it's not frozen. So anyway, we go to Canada I cover the windows up because I'm positive we're going to get robbed. Stupidly, I hide my jewelry under the mattress. Don't do that, y'all. That's like the obvious place. So I hide my jewelry under there. I hire, hire, ask the neighbor's kids, Ann and John, if they can feed Tulip, give them the key. You know, put my two cars, there's two cars in the garage and we had one car outside. So the kids would come up in the morning and they would feed Tulip, right? So on Christmas morning, all of us woke up, right? All of us, thank you for that. All of us woke up and I'm like, we got robbed. Jason was like, we got robbed. And Jason was the only one that hid his stuff, which was so interesting. Um, he took it to work and hid it. So John thought, like I had said it in August, so we thought we were going to get robbed. So John hides shit in the car trunk, right? Thinking they won't look in there. And you know where I'm going with this. Anyway, <laughs> so we're in Canada and then Anne calls me. She texts me and she goes, are you at home? And I'm like, no, we're still, we're still up in trail. And she's like, oh shit, someone's in your bedroom. I can see them. I told her, don't go in the house. And she wanted to get the kitty. I'm like, don't fucking go in there. We're not there, right? So she went down the street. They called the police. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Someone pulled up with a fucking U-Haul, right? Oh, a U-Haul on Christmas, the 26th, the day after Christmas. A U Look, I've got to fix this. All right, a U-Haul. And they took the couches, the TVs, the clothes. It was just Keith's birthday on December 18th. They took all his clothes because he wore his older clothes to Canada because he was going to be skiing, right? They took everything. They took the car. They took the car the one that John hid everything in. They got my car halfway out of the garage before the police got there. And so we get home. Our other neighbors board up the back window, John's friend. They come and they board it up because they literally smashed windows out, did a smash and grab in the house, right? So we get home. We cannot get home because every plane is booked. So we end up in Utah taking some random flight to get back to LAX to take a cab like we were supposed to fly to Burbank but we're trying to get back they have really good food in the Utah airport like healthy food like yogurt like like good yogurt okay and not a bunch of shit anyway um and nice jewelry not the point so we got back like it took us two days so we got back early and late and when we got home the police are there right so my boys are, I don't know, this is 2010. Jason is 31 now, and this is 2023. So he, at, withdraw 13 years from him. That's how old he was. So I can't even, I can't even think. So 31, whatever, he was a teenager. And Keithy was three and a half years younger. So the police are in our house. I go up in my room. All my jewelry's gone. Everything is gone. We found a Red Bull on the dresser, nightstand. I don't drink Red Bull, so I go to the cops. This is not ours. And it wouldn't be in my bedroom. Like, even if it was my boys, it wouldn't be in my bedroom. But, um, so I'm sitting there and I know it's that fucking neighbor. And her, the grandson was seen going in and out of our house. Anyway, so I'm just going to say this. I had a collection of toys. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> collection. So I run to my dresser and I'm looking for my toys. My jewelry's missing. My purses are missing. My bras are missing. Like, dude, you got like, a, a whatever. Like, all these fucking bras are missing. My underwear is missing. And about 12 toys are missing. I come flying down the stairs and I go, 
I have the cop standing there and he's taking a list of everything. And I'm like, they took my fucking vibrators. They took all 12 of them. And he's looking at me like, did she just say that? And he's writing it down. And my kid is walking by me, looking at me like, <laughs> he's like this. And John is like, why are you saying that out loud? And I'm like, no, they fucking took my vibrators. <laughs> and poor Jason and Keith, they're like, oh, that's not my mother. And they're like, they're <laughs> going down. I'm like, well, it's true. And I'm like, and they took the jewelry and they took the car and they took the um, coin collection. They took the TV. They took the couches. They stole childhood pictures. They took a box of pictures. They took a box of loose chamomile tea. Idiots probably thought it was weed. It wasn't. It was fucking chamomile tea, morons. Anyway, um, they didn't take the good silver, which was beside the chamomile tea in a uh, you know, container where you keep that, right? <laughs> they stole, well, I'm gonna tell you who steals from my purse. They stole my purses, like, oh my God. I had a client that's like a huge designer of purses and they stole every single one, like 20 of them, because she used to trade me purses for readings. I've, I have one of those purses left. Look, probably one of the first ones she gave me and it's probably 20 years old. But look, like they took all my leather rock and roll purses that she used to give me for readings. Like, really? And my vibrators. So anyway, and I used to get them because my friends and I would go to those parties or she would have the parties where you could buy all the vibrators, right? So that's why I had the collection. But anyway, this is funny. So my neighbor described the kid and I'm like, that is that bitch's grandson and the U-Haul truck, they were in from Texas. So I go on Facebook and I look for this kid that I used to babysit. You little bastard. I go to him. <laughs> there, was, there was like three different people. And I, he could have just been looking for the boys in the house because the door was open. I don't know. But anyway, I find his Facebook. Then I look for his girlfriend on Facebook. And then I start posting. If you find my vibrators from your, oh my God, then the police call me and say, you can't do that. And I'm like, well, why were they in my house? Why were they in my house is what I say. So anyway, they block me. No doubt, no doubt, seriously. So then me and John are driving around and John's like, I think the car's around here. It's gotta be around here. I just, no, we never got anything back. We didn't have insurance because we just moved to that house. I had not put the insurance on. I didn't know I was supposed to. Anyway, we didn't have insurance, so we lost everything. Um, never, like my wedding rings never came back. His wedding rings never came back. I mean, they stole probably 70 grand in jewelry, but the truth is, if you even insure stuff like that, you can't really get in like insurance policies on certain things like cameras and stuff for renter's insurance. We owned the house. But anyway, we lost everything. It doesn't fucking matter. Um, all of that and his childhood coin collection, which was quite large and and all the shit that Keithy got for his birthday and just a bunch of stuff. Anyway, so me and John are driving around. We and they took cards, credit cards out of the house and they were charging all over, like all over the neighborhood. So we get in the car when we got off the plane and we start. Yeah, it was a new beginning. We start driving to all of these stores and I'm like, who fucking came in here and bought shit on this card? And they're just looking at us like, whoa, calm down. And uh, so we're all over like Lakeview Terrace and all that shit, right? Going into all these random places where they're where they're doing everything, right? Where they're where the cards dinging all over the place. They're filling up on gas, SUVs, and I'm like, fuck these people. So we're looking for our car, and about six blocks from our house, we see the Pontiac, right? <laughs> we see the Pontiac. So John gets the extra keys, and we pop in the car. The second that we pop in the car, we got cops around us with guns pointed at us and they're like, get out of the car, that's a stolen car. And I'm like, no, it's our car and we're taking it. And they're like, get away from the car. It was reported stolen by us and they didn't know we were us. So if your car is stolen and you find it, you actually have to call them and tell them you found your car, okay? <laughs> So there we are like this, like, no, it's our car, right? No, seriously, it was such fuckery. So, um, yeah, they took everything. And, it was, and then the neighbor whose grandson that I thought it was, because she tried to get us out of the house with the hockey tickets. Yeah, no, they were on the ball there. And by the way, um, 
probably like five or six months later, they caught a 28 year old guy, somebody. There were apparently like three different sets of people in there because Ann and John saw, like they described people, I don't even know who they were. And um, they're the, they had to go call the cops. So I told them not to go in. So they found a guy from the Red Bull, the Red Bull Cup. And I snuck to the neighbor's house. John kept watch and I snuck in her garbage and I took her Christmas garbage to go through her shit to see if she had our shit and her shit when they fucking stole it. Like literally, my other neighbors probably could see. No one, no one called the cops. No one called the cops. No, nobody. And my other neighbors said, we thought you were moving. And I'm like, yeah, we're white and Canadian. And like the house got ransacked by people not this pale. So like there wasn't one whitey in the bunch and it didn't occur to you. They weren't our relatives. And they're like, well, we didn't want to make a judgment. And I'm like, um, that's just plain fucking stupid. <laughs> like, you know, where were my kids? <laughs> where, where, right? Yeah, the DNA, I know, right? Just ridiculous. So, um... They caught one guy, they caught one guy, right? And the DA called me and he said, do you wanna to come to court and do a um, witness? I guess it's a witness statement. And I'm like, no, because I figured he's already a loser, meaning he's a drug addict or whatever. He's already gonna spend whatever amount of time it is in jail. I don't need to go and give him more of a hardship. He's already in jail and my shit's already gone. So I told the DA, if you can get my stuff back, like my wedding ring and John's wedding ring, I said, then I will testify. But my guess is it's so, it's gone and I'm never going to get it back. So that guy's already in jail and I, you know, whatever. Mm. What am I going to do? I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. So anyway... Um, that's what happened. So yeah, they stole my vibrators, 12 of them, and I still never got them back, nor do I want them back. If you find them, don't send them to me. Yeah. So anyway, that's what happened. Yeah. So that was crazy, right? Isn't that crazy? Totally crazy. Not one neighbor phoned the day after Christmas and there's a U-Haul outside of our house. Now, interestingly, the neighbor whose grandson I used to babysit, her relatives came into town with a U-Haul, fascinating, from Texas. Anyway, she insisted it wasn't her. And then she was like calling me a menace all over the neighborhood. She was like, you're a menace. And I'm like, if I looked at her, like we would look at her and she'd be like, you're a menace. And I'm like, we're the ones that got robbed. Like, we're the ones that got robbed. <laughs> um, oh, drink water, Kaylee, drink water. No, it's true. It's absolutely the fuck true, understand understand it, it it's totally true I'm, I'm I mean my kid probably is like don't don't tell that vibrator story again but it's absolutely true like they robbed the Taco Bell story yeah that's a John story with his Taco Bell um but it's just um when you're okay so if you're a light worker or what kind of scam neighbors attack a crime victim yeah no she no that's what she did she was she was afraid because i told her i said your grandson was in my house and then she tried to deny he was in town i'm like he just posted on his facebook that he was in fucking town Ugh. and you know whatever anyway um <laughs> i can't deal with him so yeah it was just really funny ironic I mean, it's annoying, but you die anyway and you can't take that shit with you. So it doesn't really matter. You can't take anything with you. You cannot. The only important thing to me was the pictures. They did steal some childhood pictures, which was very strange. They stole a box of pictures. So, um, yeah. And, well, the story, I know, the nerve. The vibrator thing was like, you're going to. So I told that kid's girlfriend, I'm like, if you're boyfriend comes home and he brings you a new toy, it's my toy. So I would throw him out of your house. Like, <laughs> The police were like, please stop talking to these people. And I'm like, I'm going to keep calling. I'm going to keep posting and I'm going to keep calling. One thing is, you do to me, I'm going to fucking say it out loud. I'm going to say it out loud. Anyway, um, yeah, and then in that same house, we got home invasioned. Like, you know, I told you the story when Jason was 21. Um, <laughs> I, I, If you're going to bring a vibrator to anybody, bring it packaged, wrapped, and sealed, Okay. Like literally sealed. Do not bring like rando ones. And who, what were they doing with the bras? Like I looked at the pictures of his girlfriend and I'm like, what is she doing? Like, it's not, we're not the same body type. So it was all that. 
Anyway, that neighborhood's kind of a weird neighborhood. It's kind of a weird neighborhood. And understand, if you're a light worker on any level, right? If you're a light worker, um, they will throw distractions in your face to get you distracted over here, right? I, I have no idea, Nola girl. I don't know why they did what they did, but they did it. And it was really obnoxious. Um, yeah, I mean, it was just, yeah, well, they'll take the safe off the floor. That's what they did the last time. So they'll just take the, they just cut the safe. You guys, somebody called. I had to click the number off. They'll just take, they'll just cut the safe off your floor. That's all they do. You can have a big safe. And how do I know this? Because I know people who did that. Don't take the shingles shot, <laughs> slingshot. Oh, slingshot. I'm like, single shingles shot. Don't take that shit. Um, yes, I will do. I will do that. Um, no, we weren't the rich family in the neighborhood. I mean, no, no, the other families were literally average rich. <laughs> no, not rich. Um, I mean, we had food on the table and stuff, but you know, yes, obsidian is fab fat. Don't take any shots from the government. I mean, it's the government. Yeah, I hate November too. I hate from Halloween on because it's just ridiculous. I was harassed. Oh, you were harassed by somebody. Yeah, they just wanted to take stuff and my fucking vibrators. They probably cased the house and they probably watched. Um, I don't think I post. I usually won't post till I'm back from the trip. But um, yeah, no, I mean, we were normal. I mean, I struggled to pay certain bills. You know, I was always behind on bills when the kids were little. I mean, I did... You know, I worked every day, but I, if they, their braces, their glasses, their sports, their car insurance, their, you know, it costs money. Hi, Bobby. <laughs> Bobby's laughing. I told the robbery story again, Bobby, about the vibrators. Bobby's got some stories for you as a PI. Bobby should have her own YouTube channel and you should hear her PI stories. And here's what I'm going to say to that. And I'm being dead fucking serious. For those of you who don't know, Bobby's the one that helped me. Um, yeah, the neighbors knew. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes the neighbors hate you because you're not 400 pounds like them. I mean, I'm just saying. We had one. I mentioned my neighbor on here. I mentioned my neighbor on here and what a mental patient she was. And I did not mention her name. And four people knew who I was talking about because she used to work for the city of Burbank. Complete fucking mental patient who tortured our family and little Keithy since he was five. And Keith, when he grew up, before he died, used to just stare at her and say, you should be ashamed of yourself. She was a complete sniping see you next year. Literally. She just didn't like people because she's just a troll, okay? And people knew who she was on this live stream. Funniest fucking thing ever. I described her and people were writing her name in the comments. That's how obnoxious this bitch was. So <laughs> Bobby, okay, Bobby was the one that came to help me find all the witnesses when Keith died, all the people on the photos at random, people, mouth breather. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, it was just really, really interesting because I'm going to say in Bobby's cases that she deals with, sometimes people are having affairs with their pets. You heard that fucking right. So she's a PI. She worked on the, the Robert Durst case and many other famous cases. And there are people who get caught fucking their pets. What is that? What is that? What is that? <laughs> what is that? What is wrong with you? Yes, more than once. Yes, she gets hired to watch people's partners. Yes, it's illegal, Peter, we know this. But the partners think that the dude's just having sex with like cheating, right? So they're looking for evidence of cheating. Oh no, oh no, we can't have it with like big boobs, big ass, some chick in the bar, no. It has to be the family pet, right? <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> oh. oh, I don't know what to say. Anyway, yeah, I mean, Durst was a serial killer. That, yes, yes, yes. So these people, my uncle used to root, root his dogs. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. Does it mean touch them? I don't want anyone touching pets, y'all. Poor doggies. 
Okay, so Bobby, I told John the last story about the last thing you were talking about. And stupidly, he said, what kind of dog was it? I'm sorry. I said, who fucking cares? But anyway, he did. Because some dogs, like, you know, a big Rottweiler, you're not going to get anywhere with the Rottweiler. Um, yes, it is gross. I'm saying this is actually going on, though. Yeah, I think it's porn. I think it's the invent of porn and stuff. Yes, Sloan, can you? Yes, I did the thing on P. Diddy. That's what I did do. Well, I did it on Kim Porter and then subsequently P. Diddy. Um, yeah, so yeah, it could have been something like that. Absolutely. I just had great. I know. Well, you end up dead. I mean, these people are fucking stupid. They're stupid. Like when you die and you cross out of your body and like your maker's there and he's like, yeah, here's a screen of what you did. Like, dude, you're going back three more times for that one. <laughs> Why the fuck? <laughs> um, so anyway, I know, oh my God, the grandma. There's grandma porn out there. Now, I know I'm a grandma, but I'm not the kind of grandma Bobby told me about. Oh God. Ugh. Anyway, um, no, I didn't read that book, but I'm sure it's exactly, this is what we're doing. <laughs> I can't stand it. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, jail is just a money-making thing. So understand, um, I did a reading on Biggie Smalls and I did, yes, Bobby does need a YouTube channel with her stories. Yeah. Granny with no teeth. I can't even, I can't, la, 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 I can't hear you. Um, yes, Beyonce one we have to do. I can't. I can't. What happens to people who make a deal like J-Lo? Well, first of all, she looks like an asshole in public. But, um, okay, this is just my understanding. All right, first of all, I'm going to say this again. And I'm going to say this as much as anybody can say it. But I don't know what the connection with Offset is. Is he alive or dead? I just kept hearing Offset. So I am wondering if those two had something to do with something else. I don't know. I don't know what their connection is. I haven't really looked at it. Is it take off, I said, or offset? I don't know. Take off, offset. Next Thursday, I don't know their names. Okay, he's alive. Uh, yeah, whatever name I heard, I think it's the one that's married to Cardi B, right? So whatever I heard with that, that's what I heard in that particular instance. But um, understand, when somebody comes to you, uh, offset, okay, thank you. Take off, offset. I'm so confused. They all sound, okay, take off died. Then it was offset, I said. See, I can't even remember because I kind of, okay, offset. The one that's married to Cardi B. Um, yeah, that was a problem. So there's probably something to do with, with him and the other one that died connected to him. Yeah, there's a whole, a whole bunch. I haven't really looked into it, but I will look into it. Um, yes, 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 yes. Bingo, bingo, bingo. Bingo, 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 yes. Um, but you can't sell something you don't own. So when you make a deal on earth and you have no spiritual awareness of where you come from, or maybe you have a little bit and you don't understand that you don't own your soul well enough to be able to sell it. Like you're here, but you, I mean, so when they make deals like that, they get entrapped into, so now Prince was into sexual magic. This I know because I read for two of his girlfriends actually, or two of the women, some one of them he almost moved in with and then took the house away. But he's notorious for sexual orgies, male and female, while riding, while riding, <laughs> while riding them. Yeah, no, by while reading the Bible. So he's notorious for that, and that's a form of sexual magic. There's certain passages that they use and twist. Understand they twist it when it's a sexual stuff. Prince is known for that. That's been about around since the seventies. Look at Rick James. Look at Rick James. I'm Rick James, bitch. Look at him. Rick James. What did he get busted for? Kidnapping, sexual abuse. I mean, the crack smoking. I think he was my age. Like, stop smoking crack in your 50s because your heart will stop. You jackass. R. Kelly. Now, R. Kelly is, is a little bit... Yes, Rick James died. He was like 57. Um, and I remember I was 19 when I met him at a party in New York City from Canada. So random, random party. I just ended up, I was stripping back then. So I ended up at all these places. Um, never, never, you know, when it, obviously knew who he was, but never hung out with him more than that. But when you look at um, 
when you look at their behavior, yeah, Rick James was a super freak. I mean, I like Rick James, music, not him. But he did kidnap a woman. He did beat her and sexually abuse her with his girlfriend at the time he died, like, you know, a couple of years before he died, right? So, um, yes, I was, y'all know I was stripping. Yes, stripping. Um, so when you look at that and you look at, I mean, uh, R. Kelly was a high pimp. So R. Kelly was a pimp for record label producers. R. Kelly's not just R. Kelly. R. Kelly is... You know, uh, how do I want to word this? You know when you have a little kid and you can see that they're going to be good at something when they're like 11 and 12 and they're not that educated in the traditional way? R. Kelly was that person, okay? So R. Kelly was actually a pimp for the elite. So an elite pimp. That's why he did that. He trained, groomed, and passed around, pimped out, okay? Pimped out his protégés and his people, pimp them out. And I'm just going to say this. If you're the mother of a teenage girl or a boy, Justin Bieber, and you want your kid to be famous so badly that you literally let a fucking 10, 15, or 20-year-old man take them out, you're the fucking problem. Like, you're the fucking problem, okay? Like an idiot savant, yes, but I mean... He went into it. Now, if you're if you're a street kid or you're in the foster care system and you don't have anything and say somebody in the mob comes and says, do you want to run numbers and collect the money? You do it. You're 15. You do it. By the time you're 20, you're up in the you're you're in the upper echelon of that type of industry. Right. So it has a lot to do with that. P um, R. Kelly is a high level pimp. And when and what what was the what? But mm, I don't like anything R. Kelly did. I don't like him, but they scapegoated him. They did that for sure. What I don't like about what they did is Gail King. Gail King, who would never be on TV. Okay, number one, not camera ready. Number two, Oprah's lover. We all know this, right? Like, I'm not saying anything. Um, I probably get murdered like Joan Rivers now. Um, but anyway, and if I do, I'm not suicidal. Just so we all fucking know. Anyway, Gail King, who would never have a job if she had to climb the ladder in a traditional way because she just wouldn't. But there she is talking to R. Kelly like that. Meanwhile, he knows that she knows everything about him and has participated in that shit, okay, with her girlfriend. And then she's questioning him. It's a shame ritual and it's a fucking mockery on camera. It's a mockery, okay? It's buffoonery. It's a mockery. So she's just up there going, well, did you know? Yes, Gail King, you know that he knows that she knows. And that's why he got mad at you. You're trying to goad him, but he knows that you know. He knows, Gail King, that you know. Anyway, I mean, come on. Um, oh, the foster care industry. Uh, Georgia Tam. Is that her name? Georgia Tam? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, the foster care industry. Well, I was lucky. I was in a group home for eight months and my Aunt Betty died in 2018 and, I, and she was very nice to me and her family was throughout my whole life. So if I needed somebody, she would be there or her family would be there. Clive Davis. I mean, okay, honest to fucking God, that man did an interview where he said, oh, Whitney's family wanted me to continue on with the party. Really, Clive? Well, the woman's dead upstairs. These bitches down here are getting their fake-ass Grammys because you do understand. Okay, so let me... And this is why I don't watch the Oscars. I don't do Oscar parties. I don't care. No one cares if I care. I'm nobody. But what they've done is they set up awards for themselves by themselves. Do you understand? This isn't a real achievement because... It's people within the industry that you can't get into unless you play this game, giving awards to themselves, depending on how much money they spent to, to back the movie, who they blow, who they fuck, whose relative it is, and it's whose time. Because have you seen some of the movies that win? Like, I'm like, okay, no. So it's awards. So are the Grammys. It's awards for themselves. What they are is they are brainwashing rituals to get all the young kids with musical talent, with acting talent, with modeling talent to come in and say, I can do that. She can do that. I can do that. They want recruits into their, their 
crooked way of thinking, but they don't tell you that. They tell you it's based on talent. It's not based on talent. Yes, some of them have talent, but why do they have talent? Are they born with it? And then did they make the deal? Because usually the ones that won't make the deal, you see them, they disappear. Somebody like Dolly Parton is out there and she's high up, high up, billionaire. How come you got a billionaire like that? Like selling music, what's that about? Why is that a thing? What's that really about? Oh, no, I didn't, I don't cook anymore. After, after Keith died, I'm not cooking. The last meal I cooked was just before Christmas, before Keithy died. I know it was Easter and I burnt the potatoes. He ate them, but they weren't his favorite. And so I'm not cooking again. There's no cooking, no cooking. Um, but yeah, they recruit through this, 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 the Met Gala through their, their Grammys. If you go back and you watch Nicki Minaj and you watch um, more Nicki Minaj back in the day, it's completely satanic. And there's Madonna running around doing what she does. She looks insane right now. Take the butt implants out. And I don't care what you do, but you look fucking crazy. Who did that to her? What doctor agreed to that? They agree because it's money. So they continue to do it. So if you're young and you're talented, that's fucking awesome. That's so great. And remember how much they hated um, reality TV stars? They hated them, right? Sometimes I feel, Keith, not, not as much as I'd like to. Not as much as I'd like to. Um, but sometimes they, they got really mad at reality TV. Now, the only time I got a voice in was because of talk shows back in the day. And I'm talking 30 years ago. And I, yes, I got salmon and I've got salmon. I ordered it. I keep it in the freezer and I cook it. I just make sure it's in the daylight so the bear doesn't come because I have a bear in my neighborhood and he likes the salmon. He likes to come to Sloan's house for salmon. Um, but when you look at it, you that what they're doing is they're trying to indoctrinate your children. Oh, dress this way, Balenciaga. Is that, is that really fucking close? Is that really close? Dolly Parton is a gazillionaire. What do you think? What do you think? Do you think they're going to give her all of that power based on music that she sells, but yet you work nine to five? And 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 the harder job of it all is McDonald's or take out take out food anywhere, especially if John's going through Taco Bell. <laughs> if if my if my husband's going through Taco Bell, y'all are like. You need your extra money there, right? Gay people go to heaven. What's wrong with you? Of course they do. What does that even mean? What kind of God keeps you out of heaven? What kind of God keeps you out of heaven? That's a man. Oh my God, don't get me started. Oh my God. That's a man-made church. What? First of all, first of all, you're taking your doctrine about gay people from the Catholic church and the Pentecostals and they fuck children. So why would you listen to what they say the Bible means. Were you there when the Bible was written? Do you know actually what it says? No, because man put their hand on it. So it's like a it's like a, a, a book and they take four pages out and they write six pages. How do you know? Just imagine if there was a nuclear bomb and, and um, Dianetics was the only book left on the planet. You would believe that Dianetics was the Bible. So these people, Catholic, I don't care, Buddhist monks, I don't care who it is. It's man-made shit for money. You always have to hand your money to them. If you're smart, you know that God exists within you. You don't need a fucking person to tell you that. Least of all to tell you that you're not going to go to heaven if you're gay. Says who? Says who? Because here's my question for you. If you are indeed gay, legitimately gay, okay, not brainwashed into cuckooville, <coughs> but like if you're a little kid and you're gay, which that happens, a lot. I mean, a lot of people say they know. So if you're born gay, are you telling me that God birthed you and made you gay? Because you are from God. So he made you gay so that you would go to hell? That sounds like the devil's telling you that. That's a bunch of bullshit. I mean, please. There could be a definite, just definite bunch of other shit going on other than that. How about people ask, if you murder, rape, and pillage, are you going to hell? How about that? How about we ask the Catholic Church and all the priests and the motherfucker in the Vatican? Yeah, I said that. That fucking asshole, the Pope. Why don't we ask him if he's going to hell because of the shit that he did and didn't protect children? Why don't we say that? Why do we look at our gay children and go, 
you're gay, you're going to hell. Why? Why? Is that the same as you're going to hell if you're an interracial marriage? Is that the same thing? Or is that the same thing if you have an age different, if everybody's of legal age? Is that the same thing? Is that the same thing, right? Empath is a form of mediumship. Good question there, okay? Good question. Because empathic, empathic is called clairsentience, to feel. I walk through the room and I feel other people's energy, okay? It is clear feeling. I feel. So when I walk by this person who feels sad, I immediately wear their emotions for a split second and then I go to another person. So it's very, very transformative when you're an empath. That is how the dead will talk to you through that ability. Mediumship is the ability to read the energy and to walk through the energy of a person who is no longer in physical form. So it includes all of the clairs, clairsentience, clairvoyance, claircognitives, the smell, all of that. So yes, yes. But it, it the question should be, if you're a psychic, are you a medium? Those are two different things. All mediums can be psychics. But not all psychics are mediums. So some psychics can predict future, past, present, whatever. Mediumship is the ability to connect with the energy that has crossed over. That is a different ability. But empathic people have that energy. They feel. So an empathic medium would say, this is what I feel about this person. Okay. A clairvoyant person would say, this is what I see about that dead person. A clairaudient person would say, this is what I hear. And sometimes people have all of the clairs and sometimes people are strongest in one or the other, like clairvoyance, clairaudience, all of that. So that's kind of how it works. It doesn't mean you don't have it. It just means you have to fine tune your ability so that you understand what you're receiving. And that takes some time, you know. Yes, suicide goes to heaven because suicide, that's an interesting question. Suicide, from my understanding, suicide is, okay, I'm going to word it to you this way. I'm going to say this and I'm going to get a lot of flack. So just fuck off with your emails. Don't bother writing them to me. But suicide is the murder of human beings from an outside source. Human As human beings, we are not going to... We are not going to kill ourselves or to remove ourselves. But what? who puts the thoughts in our head? And have we been told what are our thoughts and that other people can impress thoughts in our mind that have nothing to do with us? So when somebody hears, just think of an anorexic or a bulimic, okay? So when they hear they're fat, they're ugly, they're stupid, and they keep repeating it in their own head and they stop eating because they think of that, right? And they think they're fat, they're ugly, they're stupid. When that happens, that is an outside communication that you cannot see. You think it's your thoughts, it's not your thoughts. So suicide is the belief system that that's what you need to do. But where is that coming from? Why do you keep hearing it? What are you hearing? And the minute they do it, they know they shouldn't have done it and they don't go to hell. That's just a lie. That again is the fucking Catholic church. The Catholic church the Pentecostal church, the Holy Rollers, all of that, okay? All of them. These liars in church, men and women of God who are lying. I know a few who are not, but some who are, like what kind of church says we are, you're going to talk to the clergy as if that's relevant? Don't you understand? They put a package and labeled themselves and said, here, come to us, we're the authority. They're not a fucking authority. Authority says, who? You're on earth with me. You're not any better. I'm not any better. You're not, I, uh, no. They're on earth with you. Nobody's any better here. Last time I checked, we're all here in this hell. So um, yes, the Bible is a book of spell. There's so much bullshit going on. Not that it isn't truthful, but they've removed a lot of the truth and added their own twist on it, okay? It's like taking, uh, it's like playing that game telephone when you're a kid, right? <laughs> and you say something and you're like, wait, that's not what I said when it's 12 people around. So the when when you're looking at the Catholic Church and all of that, why do you think that they want you to fear death so much? They want you to fear death because they know that you're already dead here. And when Ashley, Ashley, I love you more, Ashley. Um, they want you to be afraid to die so that you'll do everything on earth to stay here. Of course, you want to raise your kids. You want to be in love. You want to like earn enough living without doing their little slavery nine to five bullshit. But 
that's, I mean, they trick you. So I think God, if create, do you think that it's God's doing that people kill themselves? Or do you think it's Satan's doing? And by Satan, I mean beast system. I don't mean a guy with a pitchfork. And I don't mean God is a man with a, uh, all right? The energy of the Christ conscious. Do you think that when you do something like that, that that's a God thing? Or do you think you've been led astray by the beast system down here in the demons, right? Mm-hmm. That's right. I think, yes, is he, LeBron James is LeBron James. Foot, I have football players. Okay, sports figures are the biggest slaves. Look what they do. They take a bunch of strong, you know, attractive men who can play whichever sport, tennis, hockey, whatever, and they tie them down in contracts of hell because who wants to be in a contract? You can't even raise your kids. They give them billions of dollars. But why don't they use their money? Because they're slaves. They have to play those games. And what are the games for? Why is every man on planet Earth like this watching these stupid fucking games? It's a whole betting thing. And it's a whole thing they try to teach men. They say to men, watch these games. Watch these games. Watch these games. Yeah, okay. Because it matters. It's all rigged. And it's all, it's rigged. There you go, Jordan. It's all rigged all rigged. It's rigged. It's all a lie. Once you step outside of it and you see, you're like, I don't even want to participate in that. So it's all rigged. It's all rigged. No, people who commit suicide, they literally rise and they go where we go. Okay. That's what they do. They don't. Thank you for the super chats, y'all. Um, sports is rigged. The sports is rigged. They, they, they don't risk it. The Olympics is rigged. You're not getting out there. Look what they did. Look what Larry Masser did to all of those girls. Wrestling is definitely rigged. <laughs> fake, fake. Oh, I'm going to jump on you. I mean, what? Yeah, okay. Um, but look at, look at um, Larry Masser. Look what he did to all of those gym, gymnasts. Why do you have to stick your fingers up my hoo-ha when I'm a gymnast to help me massage my knee when I've injured it? And, and why is my mother in the room not saying, I don't think your finger should be up my daughter's, you know, birth canal, what, vagina. Why? Why? What is that? Why are we just finding out about that? What is that? What is that? So, yeah, what is that? Right? It's ridiculous. Sal Minio, interesting. You're bringing up some stuff. I told you guys, I did a video on... Um, <laughs> I just forgot her name. Um, oh my God. You know who I'm talking about? Sal Minio time. I have to Google it. Lana Turner. Jesus. I did a video on Lana Turner because when I first was dating John, we used to sit in a restaurant in Burbank called Granada where Lana Turner and her younger boyfriend would sit. And we, and you could smoke in the restaurants at this time. And we would talk to her. I did not know it was her until she died. And John and I were like, that's who we were talking to. Yeah, no, she's, I mean, she was like, they would have the margaritas, best margaritas there. I don't drink now. But um, anyway, we would sit and we would eat there. Shout out to my friend, Kathy, 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 who loves it there too. Anyway, um, yeah, that's, I mean, so we sat there. That's what we did. Mm hmm. I heard Brad Pitt has a, should I say it? Okay. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> I'm not going to say it anyhow, because who cares? Um, but yeah, how do you heal from past trauma? Okay. I have no idea how you heal from past, past, past trauma, past trauma. But what I can tell you is you must talk about it. Don't keep a secret. Don't be embarrassed. Don't do anything. Speak about it. That's the first thing. Second thing is, second thing, is in order to heal it, you have to understand it maybe from a third party and you have to work on energy. Okay, so I'm a believer in speaking. When you look at the P. Diddy case and you look at that Cassie, she didn't say anything for a long time. If you're gonna rape me, sneak in and beat my ass and break my nose and fuck my shit up, guess what? I'm going on YouTube the next day and you're gonna have to put a gun to my head to shut me the fuck up because I'm gonna let people know what you did so you don't get to hide behind my shame. That's what you're doing. You're placing shame. So you're, 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 you're usurping my joy and happiness and making me feel like I'm ashamed because you fucking did something. 
No, I'm not ashamed. You did it. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about you doing it, not the other way around. So remember that. Tell your kids there's no shame in anything they did. I mean, you may not want to hear it. That's true. But don't let them do that because that's how abuse victims stay stuck in abuse. They keep their mouth shut because they don't want to talk about it because it's embarrassing or hurtful to them, right? You don't have to protect me. I don't care if I die. You guys, no one's going to do anything to me again, okay? Again, my son died. What do you think you're going to do to harm me? Take me off the planet? Ready and waiting. Do it. Okay? Do it. Like I say, fucking do it. People got to stop being afraid. People have to stop being afraid. If you're going to talk to people and you're going to talk your truth about trafficking and rape and all of that, stand up and talk your truth. When they threaten to kill you, when they threaten to kill your family, keep talking. Okay? Keep talking. That's a bullying tactic and they may kill you. And so what? Everybody's in church. Y'all believe in God. So if y'all believe in God, Buddha, Allah, whichever one it is, right? Then you all believe in that. So what are you hiding from? Speak up. I'm just looking at the time because I have a client in like six minutes. Mm. <clears throat> People are always like, we're going to lose our money. We're going to lose our jobs. <clears throat> Speak up. Never let, some <clears throat> Never let someone who abuses you get away with it. If they say something shitty to you in public, call them out. If they say, you know, something behind your back and you find out, call them the fuck out. If you have a friend that comes to you and tells you, I just had this happen. I had a friend come to me and tell me a third party friend said this about me. Wasn't anything hugely wrong, but that's triangulating. Don't fucking come and tell me something that's going to piss me off. What's your intention with that? What the fuck are you telling me that for? What are you telling me that for? That person can come and tell me, but you can't parrot it. Who are you? Go away. Um, so we have to get really strong. Thank you for that. Thank you. Oh my God. Big super chat. Thank you. Yeah, it's fear and greed. And that's what they do. That's why they want you afraid. Like the Catholic Church. They want you afraid because then you will do earthbound binding things. You'll do anything to stay alive and they can keep you in the loop. When you're not afraid to die because you know you're alive over there, not dead the way that they describe it. Obviously, you're not in your physical body. I'm not insane. I know this. But once you step out, okay, um, once you step out of your physical body, you're more alive and you can do a lot more. You're really harnessed and controlled here on this energy. So yeah, don't be afraid to say anything. If somebody says they're going to fire you, you can find another job. Don't fucking worry about it. You will be provided for. You will be provided for. And that, and I believe that because I lived it after Keith died. I didn't know how I was going to work. I, and all you guys supported me. And thank you all for the support on TikTok and YouTube and all of that shit. Thank you all for that. Um, <laughs> Ashley, Ashley's texting me. She's so naughty. She'll go on my text and text me while I'm on here. And I love you more, Ashley. Um, anyway, she knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ashley knows what I'm talking about. She's pulled herself out, out of hell and actually transcended and learned to heal as well. And it's a personal journey for everybody. It is a personal journey. And the way that I word it, and this is the way that I word it. My son was run off the road after I got death threats. Um, my son was run off the road and mechanically... He was picking his motorbike up from the shop and his friend was driving behind him anyway. He was kind of run this way and run that way. So he went to avoid two different circumstances and hit the ground and died within 10 minutes. Hit the ground at 107. I think the video, we have a video of him hitting. He's already on the ground at 108. But at 116, he was pronounced dead. So, um, and I showed up at two o'clock and it's in Chatsworth. You can see it. Um, it's online. People were filming it. Anyway, I did receive death threats. I received death threats. One of the best death threats I received, which wasn't really a death threat, but it was. I was running up Mount Wilson, where I was the morning that he died as well, running up there. But I was running up, up Mount Wilson, and I was going up a waterfall and up the middle, Chantry Flats. It caught fire in 2020, so you can't use that trail. 
and there was a kid coming down by kid 30 year old man and he kind of looked like a miami kid and he had a boxer dog and that's how they always show up they always come with a spirit guard animal that's a real animal but it's it's a spirit being in an animal form when they show up and he was talking to me and he's like how do i get up the hill i'm going so i said to him thank you for that he said a boxer a dog that's a boxer he said, I want to go to the top of Mount Wilson. I said, well, you're walking downhill. Obviously, the top is the top, right? Hello. Thank you for that. I mean, that's an obvious. So I said, if you can keep up with me, I'll show you on the trail. So I went up the trail. And when I hit the main trail, we were running. And then I got to the isolated part. And I turned around. And he acted like he didn't know who I was. And he turned around, looked right at me. It was after the Nipsey Hustle video. And he pulled his arm shirt down and he's like, I have a, it was Nipsey Hustle. You remember the story? And he had a tattoo of Nipsey Hustle. He fucking knew who I was. And he told me I should be quiet is what he actually said on this trail with only me and him. So I said, come on, dude, let's go up. Let's run. Let's race. I said, I'm going to catch a ride at the top. So I lied and said I was going to catch a ride at the top so he thinks somebody was waiting for me. And I had no phone service on my phone. So I have this extra phone here. So I, I turn around with my phone and I'm like, this is before Keith died. I had three events like this before Keith died. No, they threatened me. That's what I'm saying. And I pulled my phone out and I pretended I was on Instagram. I had no service. And I'm like, hey, you guys, look at my new friend. And I put the phone. I said, hey, what's your name, dude? And... um. He pulled his hat over his head, like pulled his hat over his face. And he goes, oh my God, you're too fast for me. I think I'm going to turn around. And he left. He left. I kept going up and he left. I knew I'd beat him going up because most of them are going to do that. That was the first one. The second one was a guy with a boxer dog in Burbank when the trail was closed. And I was in the middle of the trail and he popped out of nowhere in fatigue outfit <laughs> with a boxer dog. So I pretended like the construction workers were at the bottom, right? And I said, yeah, I just passed them and the trail, we can get out that way, right? That's what I said. I knew what he was. So we ran down the hill. I'm talking to him and he, listen to this one. He tells me about his girlfriend having a baby. So I'm like, congratulations. I'm just keeping it good conversation. <laughs> Ashley's sending me little emojis up there. And then he says, Oh, it's not my baby. I said, well, good for you for watching whoever's baby it is. I don't want to say. And he's like, no, she's the surrogate for Andy Cohen. How do I fucking run into that guy? He's the surrogate. I mean, she's the surrogate for Andy Cohen. Do you hear what I'm saying? And then I ran out of the park and I'm like, nice meeting you. Bye. Second threat. And there were many threats like that. Like there were many threats. So, and as I said, my son was run off the, yeah, Michelle, you know what I mean. My son was run off the road and within the next day, I was taking my other son who was run over on his motorcycle by a woman who wouldn't get off his foot and his leg on the road. And another lady had to get out of her car and he was hitting the car and the woman never stopped. I had to take him to the emergency room. And then the dog was run over by a car. That's called a spiritual attack. And a spiritual attack is when they send the beast system, which is the non-God-fearing system, sends and triggers people in your environment to throw shit at you, to fuck with you. It's not like they're coming at you, but they can, they can get in someone's head and jump and transfer and have that person. So 12 hours after Keith died, I was in the emergency room with Jason who got hit by a car on his bike. That's two of my sons. So that's exactly what, that's exactly what happened. So yeah, it was, it was something. And then after I took Jason home from the hospital and we came out of the car, went in my old house and came back out, there was a rat in the driveway between our cars wrapped up with its legs smushed and its face fine. You get it? You see, that's a spear. I took a picture that at that time. Yes, Andy Cohen on Bravo. That's the one who's, yes, surrogate's boyfriend I ran into. So it's very interesting. That happened all in his... All right, you guys, I've got to go. I'm sorry, my client just called. So I must sign off. I love you all so much. Okay, bye, you guys. Happy Thanksgiving if I don't see you. And thank you all, everybody. I've got to run because I actually have work right now. It's work time, y'all. Bye. Thanks for spending time. Bye.